I'm going to be angry. I was a athlete in the Southeastern Conference, the best athletes in the world, and now I'm laying here on my back, and I can't move. I'll never be able to move. I'll never be able to uh, have a physical relationship with a, with, with a wife. I'll never be able to throw ball with my kids. And it's all because of that guy. I was thinking, man, does he feel this way about me? I didn't know. So I go in to see, to meet him. And, you know, he's laying there with tubes and machines hooked up to him. And he's 120 pounds and can't move. And, you know, they say, he wants to tell you something. So I lean down put my ear to, you know, he had his trachea, and he said, with his trachea, he said, why do you have to do this? Oh, man, Jeff. I mean, the weight was just lifted off. Welcome to Just Men, a life-changing program that resonates hope as well as encouragement. The program will give you information and inspiration for the glory of God. I'm your host, Jeff Tate, and thank you for joining Just Men. On today's program, we have a very special guest. This is his first time being on Just Men. Please welcome Brad Gaines. Brother Gaines, welcome to Just Men. Jeffrey, appreciate it. I'm oh. so glad that, uh, that you called me, invited me. So th this is a real treat for me. Wow, that is awesome. You know, you and I got a lot to talk about, and I really want to dive into your life. But before we even go there, let's, let's share a little bit about who is Brad Gaines. Brad Gaines is... Uh, a simple guy. Uh, I come from uh, uh, humble beginnings, uh, four brothers, uh, all boys in our family, uh, grew up in Old Hickory, Tennessee. Uh, father worked at DuPont Plant for 30 years. Uh, uh, Jeff, it was uh, the, the typical house of all boys and we fought hard but we loved each other hard. Uh, and uh, fortunately, Jeff, I was raised uh, with fantastic parents. And uh, I think today, uh, in today's society, that, uh, you know, I think that, that when you have parents like, like the kind of parents that I had, that was, when it was Sunday morning, we knew where we were. And uh, when, when we got home from church and we're out in the yard and we're out in the neighborhood and we're out running the streets playing, we knew that we better be back at 5.30 to go that night. And same thing on Wednesday night. So, you know, I was think, thankful that I had parents that raised us that way. Now, hey, we did some bad things now. But uh, I think that you're commanded uh, to, to show your children uh, the way to go, how you should live, uh, these things like that. And that I try to do that with my kids now. Hey, I have kids from, from, from six years old to high school, and look, they don't want to go to church every time. But you know what, Jeff? If, if I show them the right way, I'm commanded to do that. I'm commanded to uh, show your kids... Uh, I want them to know that, hey, uh, there are right ways and wrong ways to do things. And if I show them that, look, sometimes on Sunday nights and there's a good football game on, man, it's, it's tough to get away. But you know what? I, I, I tell them this, Jeff. I say, if, 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 if the Lord gave all this time for us, for us, and he died for us, that good night at least we can give is uh, a few hours each week that's all that's all we're talking about is a few hours now look hey I want them to learn and then look when they know that, that we're in church and we're in service and we're giving that time you know what happens now you, you want to study during the week and you want to give extra time and you want and things like that you it's no different in when you have good habits, when you, it, it's, it becomes habitual. Uh, when, you, when you like learning, that becomes habitual. Now, the same thing, uh, you can be led astray, and that can become habitual as well. So, 
you know, it, it, uh, I was fortunate that I was brought up that way. Now, look, hey, we, we, it was five boys in our family, and we fought, and, and we, did, we did some, some mischievous things. And uh, not to say that we were all saints, but, uh, hey, we, 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 we were raised right. Uh, we didn't stray from the path. And if you did stray from the, from the path, you knew how to get home. You, knew, you always know how to get home. And I think that when you're brought up with parents and in a family uh, with that structure, uh, with that base, it's, it's, it's the old, uh, it's, it's the kid song. You know, how, how did the wise man build his house? And it's so true. I mean, it's fundamentally true. You know, how do you want to build your house? How do I want to build my house? You know, with my wife and with my kids. You know, you laid a good foundation. You start talking about building. I know the word talks about except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. And in building this, in many times I understand the labor that, that it takes in order to build a house, starting with the foundation. And that's why I want to start with you, with your father. What foundation did he lay? What, what example did he show you in his life? Not just sending you to church and not doing, but what, how did he live his life that left an indelible you, you mark? You said on the you? perfect thing, and, and that's example. And that's how you've been around guys, of course, uh, me being an athlete, and, and you've spoke to many athletes. You're going to have those guys on your team that are all these rah rah guys and, you know, always hollering and making the big speech and everything. Uh, I, I was more the kind of guy, man, I, I can't waste my energy on all that, but I'll show you when I get between the lines. Mm. And the same thing, the same thing is in life, Jeff. If you, uh, if you lead by example, not, not, not now, uh, what you say, what, what I say, it, it's, it, it means a lot, but if you can back what you say up. If you live by what you say, and again, again, on the flip side, if if I'm not living a good Christian life, that's a it is an example, but it's not the right example. So, uh, my father, I've never heard my, a, a, a cuss word come out of my father's mouth. Uh, there were there was never any alcohol in our refrigerator, anything like that. Now. Uh, he had a tough childhood, you know. His uh, uh, his mother and father divorced when 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 they were young. He come from, you know, four kids in his family. Didn't have anything. Mother had to work, walk ten fifteen miles to work each way every day. Didn't have anything. So uh, I think that he did. It was important to him to show, hey, I'm going to raise my family this way. And, uh, you know, there I hear stories of uh, my father and his father. I know he loves his father, and I know he wishes he had uh, a better Christian relationship with his father. But I don't think his father uh, was that involved in their life. And for whatever circumstances, uh, I don't know. Uh, but Jeff, I think that uh, when you when people experience uh, whatever situation you're in, you're going to react differently. You're going to react differently than I would. I'm going to react differently than she would, than he would. So uh, I think that he said, you know what? I want to raise my family because his, my grandmother, bless her heart, she lived till she was 105. And, and she was a strong believer, strong believer. I mean, I can remember when we were kids, if, if she called us uh, chewing tobacco or something, I mean, she'd tear us up or, <laughs> you know, things like that. So uh, she raised her kids to believe in the Lord, to have faith, to do what's right. And, uh, you know, although there were uh, tough times in their family, it was important for him to raise his family the right spiritual way. And, uh, you know, I try to do the same thing. You know, that's what, uh, that is what 
having a good example meant. You know, I, I have guys now that come up to me that tell me, boy, I love your father. I worked with your father at the plant. Uh, he, he, I never heard him say anything cross. I never heard him. Now, he was tough. You know, he, he'd get after you now. But uh, in, I think with, when you have all boys and, you know, we fought and we got in fights and we did the typical things boys did. Uh, but our father, we knew that uh, he loved us. Uh, we knew that uh, he was a man of his word, a man of God's word, more importantly. Amen. We didn't have things. You know, some people, and, and hey, it, it's just like uh, in the Bible, you, wherever you lay your treasures is where your heart will be. If you put your treasures in things, I'm not into things, Jeff. Hey, I drive an old beat up car and and because, you know, I saw my dad do that because he wanted to, uh, what's important to you? Is it driving a Cadillac? Not that there's anything wrong with driving a Cadillac. Hey, I keep my wife in something nice for the kids and something reliable. But for me, it does not matter. I mean, I can spill my coffee in my car. I can run over, hit something, and it doesn't matter because it's just stuff. Uh, it, 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 I don't need somebody to look at me at a red light and say, man, that guy's in a, in a Mercedes and he's got some. You, you see those people, and, and I'm not categorizing anybody, but you see some of those people and you say, where is their heart? Is it wearing $400 shoes? Is it driving a BMW? And again, not that anything's wrong with that, but where is your heart? Could you have given a little of that money to your church, to a good cause, to a ministry, to somebody that needs it? And I, I'm not saying that that's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not preaching tonight. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, where is your heart? And it doesn't have to be, it can be, it doesn't have to be even monetarily. I mean, is it in um, selfish things? Mm -hmm. Is it not giving time to your family? You know, is it, hey, uh, is it, uh, does this guy play golf every Saturday? Does he play golf on Sunday morning when he should be sitting in the pew? Where is your heart? You know, you and that's it's such an awesome thing when you start talking about the matters of the heart. And I know that there's three areas that I want to begin to talk to you about uh, in shaping you as the man. Uh, obviously, you're a man of, of the heart. And one of the things I want to talk about, one is faith, the other one is family, and then third, friends. In establishing faith, what has been one of the, the most difficult tests of your faith? Well, I, I think that anybody that knows me and knows the situation that I went through with Chucky Mullins, uh, the football player at University of Mississippi, uh, when we were Vanderbilt was playing Ole Miss, their homecoming game, and uh, uh, he had tackled me and broke his neck and uh, eventually ended up dying. Jeff, through that, we became really good friends because – you know, there was a period for two months, and uh, he didn't know me. I didn't know him. You know, he's a black guy. I'm a white guy. None of that mattered. I grew up in city schools, and I never, I mean, I listened to R&B since I was in, you know, fourth grade. It, it Things like that. And so... I never saw color. It, it just never mattered to me. And so, I mean, I've had, I've had people come up to me that have said, hey, why, why are you, that guy was trying to uh, hurt you. Why do you feel that way? Yeah, I can't, that's not me. Because, you know, Jeff, here's a guy now that not only has he broken his neck, and he's paralyzed, 
from the neck down. He will never be the same. He will never be able to use his hands. He will never be able to brush his teeth, comb his hair, eat his own food. Ever. So I'm not so sure. And I struggled with this and it took long prayer. Could I do that? I don't know if I could have. I mean, to, to, to know that for the rest of your life, that you are laying on your back looking straight up. And there's nothing you can do about it. And so I struggled for a long time. I still struggle. You know, it uh, that was, uh, look, I know that that's the game. Injuries are going to happen. You've interviewed many athletes and, Hey, I've got my two other brothers in, that had played pro ball as well. I mean, they've had 50, 60, 70 surgeries. So there are, I know that that's part of the game. But you know what? It's still, it's still through that I have a compassion for another human being. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Wow. And in this process, and you're saying you, you took you a while uh, to, um, I guess, to gain your sense of, of perspective, your sense of faith, your sense of belief, because I, 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 my understanding, there was a challenge even in your belief oh, system. Yeah, there. You're always, you know, it, a situation like that. And, hey, you've heard, you've heard sermons as, yeah, you don't ask why, why, why. But until you're in that situation. Man, it's easy to say, gosh, Lord, why? Why does this happen to, uh, you know, why do these things happen to great people? He was a phenomenal person. I mean, he loved everybody. He smiled all the time. He was one of those guys that uplifted you, lifted you up, lifted his teammates up. He was that guy. Why does this happen to him when it should have happened to me? You know, here's a guy that, when he's 12 years old, uh, never he never knew his father. He was 12 years old. He lost his mother. He didn't have any money. He was dirt poor. Had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. He he goes to uh, Carver and Karen Phillips, bless her heart, unbelievable people. Asked them, can I live with you? They ran the rec center in Russellville, Alabama. He had nowhere to go. So you're talking about a guy that has struggled his whole life. And, and here's me who comes from a two-parent home. Uh, uh, I have, we've all had done well uh, athletically, socially, uh, things like that. At the time, I've got two brothers playing professional football. I know that, hey, that's where I'm going. That's my next step. And boom, this happens. But you know what? I know, I know, I know, I know that the Lord chose me. He picked me. He had something different for me. Brad, hold up a second. You're not going to play professional football. I've got something different for, for you. And that's what it was. I mean, I'm not, I'm not getting hokey or kooky or anything but I know that that he chose me I really do mm. and in choosing you how in terms of purpose uh, fulfilling purpose moving beyond that period how has God and your family played a role in you becoming the man that you are today well I mean you have to uh, the Lord has to be uh, the center of your life more than anything. Uh, you're commanded that uh, you put Him first before your family, before uh, your kids, before your wife, before everything. You put Him first. And the rest, it, it, if you have Him first, Jeff, everything else is easy. Mm -hmm. It's easy. 
I mean, all those other things fall into place. I mean, that's, uh, uh, that's how it happens. And I think that when, when, when people, and myself inclu included, that, you know, it's easy to stray away. But you have to know how to get back home. And I think that when people do not have the Lord first, that's when uh, you have problems or you start drinking or you start smoking dope or you start running around on your wife and you start doing this and you start doing that. But when you have him focused, when he is the center, everything else is easy. It's easier, it's easier for me. I know that when I study the Lord or when I'm more involved, it's easier. And I know that when I'm not as in tune mm -hmm. and when I'm not as involved, you know, you worry and you think about other stuff. And, and so you, that's when you say, you know what, got to get it in check a little bit. You know, you got to check yourself some. And so it, it's a struggle. Uh, life, life is not hard if you have the Lord as the center and the focus. Because in general, uh, life is tough. You're going to have tough times. I'm going to have tough times. Uh, you're going you're to get curveballs thrown at you all the time. But, you know, you have to stay in the batter's box and you can't step out and you, you bear down on it and you wait for that thing to break and then you tag it. That's how you do it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I know that a lot of people, when they experience things like yourself, they have a hard time dealing with forgiveness. Um, not just necessarily forgiving uh, the things that happen around them, but also forgiving themselves. How do you deal with forgiveness? Yeah, and, and you know, when, when that happened to Chucky Mullins, my thing was, what does he feel about me? I had not spoken to him. I didn't know him. So the first time that I saw Chucky Mullins, uh, I was talking to my coach, and my coach had told me, he said, Brad, you don't need to go see him. I've spoken with psychologists. I've spoken to psychiatrists, whatever. They don't think it's a good idea for you mentally to go see him. They don't think it's a good idea for him to see you as well. I get it, okay? I didn't accept it. So I said, I've got to know, I've got to meet this guy. So after the Liberty Bowl, I, I, I go to the hospital and I get off the elevator, and there's 100 people, Jeff, lying the hall. Lying the hall to see Chucky Mullins. And as I get off the elevator, the people part, and you could, you could hear them saying, that's Gaines. That's the guy. And so as I get up to the nurse's station, uh, they take me back to Chucky, and I, I was scared to death. What does he think about me? Does he blame me for being in this position that he's in? I probably would. I, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You're going to, if he's laying there, if it's me, I'm going to be angry. I'm going to be angry. I was a athlete in the Southeastern Conference, the best athletes in the world and now I'm laying here on my back and I can't move I'll never be able to move I'll never be able to uh, have a physical relationship with a with with a wife I'll never be able to throw ball with my kids and it's all because of that guy I was thinking man does he feel this way about me I didn't know so I go in to see, to meet him, and, you know, he's laying there with tubes and machines hooked up to him, and he's 120 pounds and can't move. And, 
you know, they say he wants to tell you something. So I leaned down, put my ear to, you know, he had his trach in. And, and he said, he, he, with his trach in, he said, it wasn't your fault. Oh, man, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I mean, the weight was just lifted off me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how he felt about me. You know, so when you say forgiveness, you know, he forgave me. And I'm not sure forgive is the right word there, but he said, hey, it wasn't your fault. I think he had read in the paper where I was struggling. I was struggling. And so it, it was more important to him for to make me feel better. When here's this guy that will never be the same, and he's more concerned about me. I mean, it's a, it's you, you. There are two kinds of people. You are either, I, t I tell my kids this: you are either a giver or a taker. I like being a giver. I mean, if you're a taker, you're selfish. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're selfish. Yeah. If you're a giver, you're selfless. Mm. And and it uh, if you if you think about others first, if you put others before yourself, you're a giver. You if you if it's if if it if it makes you if it makes you feel good it makes me feel good to give to know that I'm helping somebody out man look I'm not keeping I'm not keeping a, 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 a score here of the good deeds that I do for you and I expect you to do something good for me that's not what a giver does a giver gives and he expects nothing in return mm. wow that's beautiful you know, you, we got to have you back on, on the show. And as you were sharing it, my heart was just touched when you said the word and what he said to you is it's not your fault. And I know that's what Christ is saying to us. There's many that are suffering and going through a lot of challenges in their life. And he's saying, it's not your fault. And he's saying, come unto me all that labor and heavy laden and I will give you rest. Yes. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yes. For my yoke is easy and my burdens are light. It's not your fault. Right. And when we surrender to him, we have life. That's right. And abundant life everlasting. Last word of encouragement. You know, uh, my, one of my favorite verses in, in the Bible is uh, Philippians 2, verse 3 and 4. And it is, uh, it, it, I, want, I want your viewers to look it up. And it is, uh, hey, don't do anything in vain. Be humble. Be humble. And, uh, you know, put, put, put Christ first in your life. Amen. That's good. Stay focused. Wow. Jeff, appreciate it.